impact was explosive. So as you published your track, and we asked for, for simple data, just um, your, your name and verification of your date of birth and email address, um, I'll talk about the incentive in a second. Your tracks were automati automatically published on the Nissan website. So we're working within owned media there. When you published your track, we littered it with tools for you to socialize your music. So we went to all manner of social networking sites, preference sites, bookmarking sites, even email was an option. Now, um, the button to the right says vote. So on, the, on Nissan's owned media, you could play the tracks, they were di digestible at 30 seconds long, and, and lis listen to them and then vote for your favorite. There was severe comp competition because the campaign lasted for a few weeks, and at the end of each week, LaRue selected the best track and put it into a pot. Now, we activated the campaign not by focusing on display media. We, we identified influential music and mainstream bloggers. And, and they, uh, they encouraged people uh, to, uh, uh, to generate their own content. So this was an interesting departure. Rather than commissioning fixed content, um, we felt brave enough because the parameters were tight enough and the motivation was there to co-create content and invite people to, to co-create. Um, it, it was explosive. Um, people were really passionate, tweeting and retweeting, imploring their friends to vote for them. Um, one person here uh, says, uh, uh, clearly got a friend to uh, promote his, please get everyone to vote for this. And then the, within seconds he published uh, the same tweet, but do it now. There was a desperation. It all culminated with the winning track selected by LaRue from, uh, from uh, three weeks worth of, uh, of, of tracks. It, um, it culminated in the winning track being produced professionally in the studio and then launched at London's Coco Club. So earlier I was talking about um, uh, layering and, and building your different media channels in, 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 in a successive order. This was a live component. Uh, and a lot of research shows, and we were talking about it last night, a lot of research shows that in this um, uh, always-on virtual world, there's a desire for live, and, and we capitalize on that. In, in the UK, we have the Glastonbury uh, Festival, um, and there, there's a huge, um, uh, a huge demand for tickets there, uh, as well as other festivals around the UK. So launching the winning track live at a nightclub where the Sex Pistols, where Madonna and other famous acts had, had played was a really valuable prize. And we found that um, uh, we had about 2,500 people there on the night. The 2,500 were people who'd entered their tracks. Uh, they all qualified. So they received their ticket free, price-wise, free of charge. But we found people selling the tickets on the black market and willing to buy them on the black market. On the night of the event, um, mainstream press wanted to be there. So out of this commercial property, we'd created real engaging content. During the uh, night of the performance, we also, as a first, streamed it live through Spotify. And there's a short video here that it's not a case study, it just captures um, the, uh, the, the night itself. If we, if we can play that, please. Results-wise, we're, we're still processing the information. Um, uh, we've doubled the predicted reach. We're, we're not sure. The number, the, uh, we're looking at double, uh, double digits in the millions here. And given the population of the UK is between 60 and 70 million, it's, it's just incredible. Um, if you order a Nissan Duke, it will take you about three months to receive one. 
Um, the site itself, the, the owned media, had 81,000 engagements. And this was an interesting site because we had to redefine the metrics which define success. So, so we identified those metrics as creating, um, uh, listening, sharing, and voting. We had over 3,000 uh, track entries, and we've just started a brand tracking exercise. So we're, we're, uh, um, we, we, our feeling is that we've elevated the positioning of Nissan to make it appealing to this young, younger audience. So we're starting to see a halo effect for the brand around this product campaign. And the clients are already talking about successes to this. But the point is, um, don't separate your real and virtual worlds. And as I was saying earlier, a brief and an expectation might exist to have a bunch of assets that are distributed um, in, in different channels. Think really carefully about how you can maximize the impact of the campaign um, by um, uh, moving from virtual to real world, how one piece of, uh, of activity can activate a response elsewhere. It's, um, it, it, I, I think it, it, it's, uh, it's really important. Number two, don't be afraid to take risks with your idea. Again, very quickly, um, brief from Lacoste, the fragrances, to promote a series of new fragrances, L1212, to a young male audience, a 17 to 24-year-old uh, audience, who um, research showed like to publish uh, their antics online. Uh, and we deduced that they, it's their way of saying that they're sociable and accepted in their tribe. So um, the idea itself was called Urban Crocodiles, and we wanted to create awareness through socialization. This audience, and um, uh, research told us, just wouldn't consider Lacoste at all as a fragrance option. So we had to reach them in an altogether different way. So we, we looked at the way they, they live their lives socially through rich media and, and, and reflected that with a couple of shorts. And the big risk we took here is that there was no display media support, and at the start of the campaign, no declaration of Lacoste. If we can play the video, please. All right, Tom's just run a race, and uh, I'll let him tell you where he come. Where did you come in that race? I came last. Huh? I came last. Where did you come? I came last year. <laughs> and what is it you're wearing? A penguin suit. A what? A penguin suit. <laughs> you're like an idiot. No, I don't. I'm like a penguin <laughs> You were training so long for that race. I'm... Huh? You come last. So I've been training for that, haven't I? <laughs> What's that? What? Up there? What the hell is that, man? Something. What was up there? Oh, no, 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 We had, I won't play the other one, but we, we had another film. Now, um, we felt the only way to earn the right to have a role in people's lives is to really step into their existence. Um, and if we hadn't taken a risk, that wouldn't have happened. Within days, we had over 100,000 views uh, with people debating, I mean, quite comedic issues, like if a crocodile chases you, run in zigzags um, to, to avoid being caught. But um, we, we managed to, to, to enter their world. So I've taken you on a rapid tour, and you could argue that they're just techniques and tactics. We've seen crowdsourcing, we've sparked conversations, we've moved from real world in real time to retail. Um, but building up to number one, you could argue, and we've, we've heard it over the last couple of days, is that we're gradually moving away from TV networks or media networks to powerful and influential networks of consumers. So if that's the basic premise, if, 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 uh, if we can uh, find a role for brands, to people, uh, for brands to play in people's lives through the networks of, of consumers. The number one tip uh, from me, and I believe that this passionately, if I had five minutes to talk to you, this is all I would dwell on, is what is the contagion in your idea um, that will keep people talking and get others to talk for you. I implore you to ask that of all the work that you commission, that you review, uh, that you, you approve. Um, otherwise, um, you'll, you'll be missing out on, on, a, on, on a, a, a potential way uh, to reach your audience. Um, 
There's one example, and it's my favorite piece of work um, that I've been involved with that encapsulates this. We had a brief from Snickers um, to increase sales and awareness during the World Cup period uh, last year. Um, we received the brief in London, but the, uh, the, the brief was to be executed across the Middle East, 10 markets. Conducted our research and looking for that deep-seated psychological uh, uh, and attitudinal trigger, we found that, um, that our young male audience liked to brag. Um, they liked to show off to one another. Snickers is also positioned as an energy bar. So playing with those two strong thoughts, um, we produce this. If we play, please. Nearly there, Brad. It's no longer good enough to say, um, uh, to just talk about the value of the idea, in, in my view. What's the contagion in the idea which will allow it to spread like wildfire? What's the contagion in the idea that's based on that deep-seated um, insight that, that, uh, that finds, that helps your brands find a role in someone's um, existence? Um, as the slide said, phenomenally uh, successful. Um, there they are. Uh, pleased with their success after the event. And uh, there we are a couple of weeks ago, bizarrely picking up uh, a prize in, uh, in London, uh, a major award on um, best integrated campaign. The brief landed as a digital uh, one. And the client had the foresight to say um, they didn't want the kind of work that Nike and Adidas had been doing, uh, have been doing over the last 10 years, uh, showing people uploading their key uppies. Um, I think that's it from me. Thank you. <laughs>